I'd like to do now then is to introduce again Dr. Rodri Evans. He, he was here not very long ago um, talking about um, his work with the Sophia project. But he's going to talk to us some, about something a little bit different now, and that's this absolutely wonderful palace of an observatory wow. um, outside Chicago. Now, I'm not going to say any more about it. I'm, I'm very keen on this, uh, this thing. But Rodri um, was a researcher there, and I believe he's still a visiting fellow at the, um, at the observatory. So without further ado, I'm going to ask uh, Rodri to tell us about the Yerkes Observatory, which I've never seen, uh, but would dearly love to. So, yes, as Steve mentioned, I was lucky enough to work at this wonderful place for six years. And, in fact, my daughter here, the youngest of my three children, and her brother and sister were born in the hospital nearby this observatory, about six miles. So she and her brother and sister are all uh, Wisconsinites. Um, so um, I'm going to give the, the early history, actually, of Yerkes Observatory. Um, so from 1891 through until 1903, and I'll explain why 1903 is the, is the end point of my story. So obviously that's still quite a long way in the past, and, and maybe each year I could come and give an, a, another decade. Um, so um, that's what my talk is, is going to be about. Uh, before I start, does anyone know what makes Yerkes Observatory so famous and which causes it to feature in almost every introductory astronomy textbook? The largest refractor. The largest refractor in the world, exactly. So what I'm going to give you actually is the story of that refractor, how it came about, and a little bit of the, of the science that has been done with it, but as I say, I'll, I'll finish my story in 1903 for, for reasons I'll explain. So, our story features three heroes, three men, three very different men, actually. <laughs> On the left is William Rainey Harper, and he was the first ever president of the University of Chicago. In the middle is George Ellery Hale, who was the first ever director of the observatory, a, a truly remarkable uh, man in my opinion. And on the right is Charles Tyson Yerkes, after whom of course the observatory is named, and he's the one who put up all the money for it. So first of all I'm going to tell you a little bit about these three people. So William Rainey Harper was a child prodigy. He graduated from high school at 10 years of age, he got his BA by 13 and his PhD by 18 years of age. Wow. And in between getting his, his BA and his PhD, he spent about 18 months working. So he could have actually got his PhD at about 16. <laughs> and he was an expert, he was a biblical scholar. He, his PhD was in ancient languages, so he knew Sanskrit, uh, Sanskrit and Hebrew and Greek. And his expertise was, uh, was the, the Bible, oh, he was a biblical scholar. And in 1891, at the age of 35, John D. Rockefeller, uh, whom I'm sure you've all heard of, a very uh, wealthy 19th century businessman, uh, decided he was going to start up uh, a new university in, in Chicago and to fund it. And he appointed uh, Harper as the new president of his new university because Harper had already shown by that age that he was one of the leading academics in the, in the United States and a very dynamic uh, person, so he was just the kind of uh, president that uh, Rockefeller was after because Rockefeller wanted to make the University of Chicago the, the greatest research university in the United States. And before I forget, obviously you can measure how good a university is in various ways and you'll get a different answer depending on how you measure it. But um, I looked up a couple of weeks ago because the Times Higher Education came out with its rankings of universities in the world. And number one was actually Caltech, number two was Harvard, um, Oxford I believe was four, um, and, and so on. Chicago was eighth or ninth. Um, but then I decided to look up to, because I'd always 
sort of known that, that Chicago had a lot of Nobel laureates associated with it. Mm -hmm. So I looked up those figures. And by associated, I mean either that they did some of their study in there, their first degree or maybe their, their graduate studies, or they had worked at the, the place. And Caltech, I think, and my figures may not be exactly right because it's a few weeks ago, but they're certainly in the right ballpark. Caltech, Caltech has 31 Nobel laureates associated with it. Harvard has about 73, and University of Chicago, 81. It's the leading one in the world in terms of the number of Nobel laureates associated with it. So, you know, over 100 years on from what uh, Rockefeller hoped to achieve and, 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 and Harper hoped to achieve, you could say, well, they, they have achieved it. So he is our, our first uh, character in our story. George Ellery Hale, I actually have a, a lecture on George Ellery Hale because as far as Hale is concerned, I'm going to stop the story in 1903, but he went on to achieve many remarkable things in his life, and I'd be more than happy to come back and, and talk about more of what he achieved. But um, Hale was, was born into wealth. His father, uh, William Ellery Hale, made a fortune after the great Chicago fire of 1871. Chicago, a bit like London burning down in whenever it was, 1666 or 1665. Um, Ch Chicago had a massive fire in 1871 which pretty much wiped out the entire uh, center downtown area of the city. And when they started rebuilding Chicago after the fire, the technology existed.